Hi, my name is Danny Richter, and I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in the Geoscience Curricular Group at Scripps. My research is concerned with diatoms. Diatoms are one of the most productive forms of life on the planet, responsible for about 43% of ocean primary productivity, and thus responsible for about one quarter of the oxygen we breathe. Thanks to their heavy opal skeletons, or terrestrials, they have been implicated as being key in bearing enough carbon dioxide to raise atmospheric oxygen to the point where placental mammals, as you and I, could even exist. Diatoms, like all life, need metal to stay alive. Like all phytoplankton, they are capable of concentrating these metals inside their cells by hundreds, sometimes thousands of times above their ambient levels. They're so good at it that there are almost no metals in the surface ocean, but two to three orders of magnitude more at depth once the phytoplankton degrades. Unlike most other phytoplankton, which have no skeleton at all or skeleton of calcite, which dissolves in acid, the diatom of opal isn't susceptible to acid degradation. Also, unlike the calcite order phytoplankton, opal has been shown to include several toxic trace metals including nickel, aluminum, iron, zinc, probably copper, and from my own research, cadmium. Diatoms have also been shown to flourish at high concentrations of these metals that are toxic to other genera of phytoplankton. These are some of the most problematic metals contaminating ocean and fresh water today, from which humans draw food and drinking water. Mineralogically, this makes sense. Opal is hydrated in morphous silica, glass. Glass is exactly what we use to store radioactive nuclear waste to render it inert for thousands of years. Unlike carbonate, with the specific internal structure where only specific elements can substitute for others within that structure, glass, being amorphous, has lots of little places where positively charged ions and metals to hide in. Also unlike coccolith forest, the main carbonate secreting phytoplankton in the ocean, diatoms are also found in freshwater lakes and streams and do quite well. Benthic diatoms, which grow on a substrate such as rock or sediment, have even been found in acidic environments with pH as low as 2, same pH as your stomach. My idea for this competition is to use diatoms to clean up low pH water and then mine the diatoms. They can survive at low pH, which means that they could potentially be used to clean up metal laden acid mine drainage that reaches out of mining operations where other species could not. As I'm sure others in this competition are telling you, diatoms produce fatty acids that can also be used for biofuels. Because they are organic, their skin can also be digested anaerobically to produce natural gas. A recent paper in Energy and Fuels outlined a process for purifying diatom silica from diatomite into high-grade silica usable for solar panels. What if we use these diatoms to clean up acid mine drainage or other metal-laden waters, press them for the oil, put the rest in the anaerobic digester for natural gas, and then took all the opal and metal-rich deposits that we accumulated at the bottom of the digesters, either buried them, or, better yet, recycled the metal-rich tin. Zinc, copper, cadmium, and nickel are, after all, valuable metals with many industrial applications. Copper ore is profitable, for example, to mine with a natural concentration of only 0.4 to 0.8 percent copper. My research is bringing us closer to this closed-loop application. I'm studying how diatoms uh, how much of these metals make into the diatom threshold versus the organic matter. I am trying to establish a predictive model for how the amount varies with ambient concentration. Incorporating some metals causes the threshold to take up more or less of other metals and how this varies across species. This research will help us understand just how much of these metals diatoms can take up and how much makes it into their threshold. This work can be used as a fundamental first step for this type of application. Summarize. Diatoms flourish in both freshwater and marine environments at low pH and higher levels of toxic metals than any other genera of phytoplankton. They can concentrate metals at hundreds to thousands of times above the ambient concentration. This com combination of traits makes them a prime candidate for bioremediation in water's characteristic of acid mine drainage. The diatoms so collected could be processed to extract biofuels put into an anaerobic digester to produce natural gas, and the remaining terrestrial or tailings could be mined for the now concentrated metals and or hydrate silicon. Such a system could be an effective way of bioremediation that may also generate enough funds to be self-funding. My entry into the competition, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found it worthy of your consideration.